Heel raising movement of an RPD is prevented by occlusal rest, minor connector, direct retainer and indirect retainer. Now what is the heel of the mandibular uh, cast partial denture? Heel is this portion. The part of the denture that covers the retromolar pad. Now it can interfere with a lot of things. Especially the maxillary tuberosity. Okay. This upward lifting of the cast partial denture is called as heel raising effect. Now this can be minimized by understanding the simple mechanics that this point acts as a fulcrum over here. So if E is the effort arm and R is the resistance arm then the denture is going to tip along this axis which is the fulcrum where you will have a direct retainer. So this tipping axis or the tipping motion or the heel raising effect needs to be Re removed. This is particularly in distal extension or Kennedy's class 1 and 2 cases, right? So how do you get rid of this kind of a movement? By connecting these direct retainer assemblies on both sides and drawing a fulcrum line. So a fulcrum line is that axis along which the denture is going to tip. Okay, and perpendicular to that you will give an additional component called an indirect retainer. You can go through the bytes on indirect retainer and the video where we have explained in detail about how to place an indirect retainer. So it should be perpendicular to the fulcrum line as far anteriorly as possible. And it can be in the form of a cingulum rest or an occlus occlusal rest or a combination of both. So here this is Kennedy's class 2 situation. And here is where uh, you will place the indirect retainer. If you see the image number 2, it is a Kennedy's class 1 situation because there is bilateral edentulous area. And this additional component over here, there is a cingulum rest on the canine and there is an occlusal rest on the premolar. So a combination of these two is the indirect retainer. So indirect retention can minimize the heel raising effect and therefore the correct answer is option number 4.